Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, art, and culture. And today, we're going to be talking about the newest album from Megadeth, titled Dystopia. There's no easy way for me to handle this review. Mostly because, as I've said in the past, it's hard to talk about bands that have defined their genre and who have decades worth of material. And thus, it should be without question that I say that I respect how Megadeth were influential on metal and instrumental to defining thrash. All that being said, now having revisited the entire Megadeth catalog before this review, well, it's mixed, to put it lightly. Yes, Countdown to Extinction and Euthanasia, they're good, even great albums, but they are not a group that I find all that interesting or all that consistent. Yeah, I mean, sure, the late 90s slump happened when they went towards alternative rock that honestly wasn't all that bad going back through it, but I'm not entirely wild about some of their earlier albums either, which often felt the victim of some great musicians not exactly having strong, consistent songs behind them. And frontman Dave Mustaine has not helped. He might have had some power and personality, but inconsistent mixing early on meant he he never was sounding as good as he could, and yet when moved closer to the front of the mix, his more nasal howls have always kind of rubbed me the wrong way, and it's only gotten worse in recent years. And that's even before we get to the songwriting, which was never particularly clever or nuanced, or the mid-2000s where the lineup started changing with every other album that would only begin to regain some kind of form with Endgame in 2009, only for most of that form to be promptly pissed away on Super Collider in 2013. A step at more commercial hard rock that just ended up feeling formless and pretty generic. I mean, I like to risk more than this. Anyway, when I heard that Dystopia was reportedly going back for a rougher, more riff-intensive sound, plus another lineup change, I didn't know what to expect. Not really considering myself a hardcore Megadeth fan, or much of a fan at all. I really wasn't invested enough to hope for quality, but I also had heard the hard right political bent was creeping into Dave Mustaine's lyrics. And considering that Megadeth have never been a band defined by lyrical nuance, and having heard some of Mustaine's antics over the Obama administration, which really have just been painful, I hope this would turn out better than I had reason to expect. Was I right? Well... Look, folks, this record is a slog to get through for more reasons than one. And that gets frustrating when you realize that so much of the problems with this record aren't the fault of the rest of the band, but can be laid square at the feet of Dave Mustaine himself. I don't think there's a doubt in anyone's mind that these guys can lay down some impressive shredding, but anything beyond that? This album goes off the rails hard and becomes a real headache to get through. And that's before we get to the politics of this album, and yeah... We'll get to that. But you know what? Let's start off by highlighting the fact that there is good musicianship and a few definitely good songs on this album. Dystopia is definitely a pivot back to Megadeth's thrash side, and they don't waste any time piling on the riffs and the melodic solos whenever they can. And a lot of the chemistry between the guitars are impressive as hell, especially on the more strident solos of the title track, or the chunkier revving rumbles of Fatal Illusion that leads into a really sweet bass solo and tempo shift. And I really do like a lot of the acoustic elements that creep into Poisonous Shadows of the first half of the instrumental conquer or die. I still don't think Megadeth has a firm handle on all that symphonic touches that they try to wedge into the former song, which can come across as a little bit gimmicky, but there are elements of the atmosphere of these songs that I do appreciate. But that's also where we run into the first big problem. The production on those riffs really doesn't help the differences between them stand out. When they aren't compressed into a chugging slurry, they can have some grip, but not a lot of body to them. Not helped by the bass lines and the depth in the mix feeling really underutilized. And then we get into the issues of modulation and dynamics. The layering is so by the numbers that none of the brighter guitar leads and the solos get that much of a chance to really hit with impact. And for as much as the riffs kind of run together, it means that the melodic hooks don't really jump out at you either, which means things can get really kind of tedious when they aren't being driven by the vocal line. And it's most frustrating on the symphonic touch tracks. Conquer or Die is probably my favorite song here as the solitary instrumental piece, but I can't help but feel that it'd be so much better if that bell toll or that percussion accent didn't feel completely swamped out and had more room to breathe. And look, there are songs that lyrically can actually work for me here too. I like the sheer violence of Fatal Illusion, which works as a pretty basic revenge fantasy, or the Trojan War inspired Death From Within, that connected reasonably well too. It's no, and then there was silence by Blind Guardian, but then again what is? Unfortunately, that's pretty much where my lyrical praise ends because Dave Mustaine's lyrics are very much focused on hammering on his dystopian theme, specifically how it applies to the United States right now. Now, let's put aside the fact that most dystopian arcs, especially in modern metal, have been done to death and Dave Mustaine's not bringing anything all that revolutionary or innovative to the template outside of some very hyperbolic language, but it's very quickly becomes clear that Dave Mustaine is trying to bring in his own personal politics onto the album, and this is where the comments section of this video turns into an absolute nightmare. So to try and explain this, let me start by putting down my three conditions for good political art. Nuance, 
populism, and power. The best political music has all three. At the very least, you need two, and yet on Dystopia, Megadeth has power, but little else. And to give you a taste of all this, the opening track, The Threat Is Real, is an anti-immigrant screed where he describes them as a culture made of cover-ups, leprosy touching their flesh as their cancer now eats us alive. All this is prefaced by a Middle Eastern sounding riff that's clearly intended to sound exotic and flip the fear switch because the threat is real. Ugh. Look, here's the problem. There are legitimate and complicated questions surrounding both sides of the immigration debate, but Dave Mustaine isn't interested in having that conversation so much as he is playing into xenophobic fear-mongering, not helped by later songs that say, why cower about to all those who oppose the American world, and that family and faith are being attacked by the state that's looking to make America weak. But of course, he knows better because the Emperor's got no clothes, with the title track outright implying that that tyrant needs to be killed. And look, I can disregard the violent imagery. It's Metal, that comes with the territory, but it's politics done with such a broad brush that I can't even take it seriously enough to get angry or offended about it. It feels like I'm watching a bad Dinesh D'Souza documentary, and yes, I'm including the xenophobic implications in that too. And the more I read these lyrics, the less they even try to make sense. It's so hysterically paranoid, occupying the worst sort of regressive, jingoistic nonsense, which as a Canadian just looks so stupid from the outside, that I'd be inclined to consider it parody or satire, except Dave Mustaine isn't trying to be funny. He believes a lot of the nonsense that he's spewing, and so do a lot of people. And it's framed as though he's in the right, and violence is the correct answer to fix things. Especially if you dig into the subtext, which even makes songs I like, like Fatal Illusion, feel even uglier. And you know what? Even if I agree with his arguments, I still wouldn't want to be associated with this because of how badly it's presented. Forget the hyperbole, which you would expect from Megadeth. On a purely technical level, the writing is sloppy as hell. Rhymes are disconnected, the lyrical flow is leaden, and the number of ridiculously bad lines is is just embarrassing. Take his slamming us the haters on Look Who's Talking, where he trashes an old friend who turned against him who claims has a moth-eaten brain by meth, and it makes Dave Mustaine look way worse than whoever he's dissing. Now let me clarify something here. Megadeth has never been a nuanced act. I'll say it again. They might have had more populism back in the 80s and 90s, but they made broad, borderline, ridiculous political statements when they were on the left too. But you want to know the difference between then and now? The vocal line. And that over 20 years ago, they were mixed deep enough that you could effectively ignore the vocals altogether. And yet on Dystopia, the overdubbing is piled on so that every word of Dave Mustaine's nasal rasping, borderline cartoonish delivery is right at the front of the mix. And speaking of someone who has never really liked his delivery, there are songs where he just sounds terrible here. The worst probably being on post-American world and poisonous shadows, in the latter case his attempts to get more melodic just sound wretched and craven. And considering how hard he's trying to sound menacing, probably not the best choice for a political album, it doesn't really remotely help his case. Half because he really doesn't pull it off, and half because Mike Patton can do all this roughly 10 times better. So look, in the end, look, I'm probably the wrong person to be reviewing this record given that I'm not really a Megadeth fan, I just don't care. But on the other hand, having no stake in this probably gives me the most objectivity. And on that note, this record has the occasional guitar solo that I really like, but it can't make up for by the numbers production, awful vocals, and writing that I'd find regressive and borderline offensive if I could take it remotely seriously. So for me, it's a 4 out of 10 and no recommendation. But you know what, if you're a hardcore Megadeth fan who could ignore Mustaine and just focus on the riffs, you know what, even with all that, they've done better. As I said, this album gave me a throbbing headache with every single listen through, and that's never a good sign. I'd skip this. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. You'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. Please folks, just keep the comment section civil. As I said, it's just my opinion. I wholeheartedly expect that many of you will have very different ones. Um, outside of that, anything else you want me to cover in upcoming weeks, or anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, I'm all ears. Till then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.